First shoes in graph theory, pathfinding algorithms can be found everywhere in computer science, especially video games. The principle of a pathfinding algorithm is to find the shortest path between one start point and an end point. However, the difficulty of this task is that the algorithm must be aware of its surroundings, here obstacles. Many algorithms do exist on this subject and have been used for years and years, such as A-star pathfinding. And like I just said, A-star pathfinding will find the shortest path between two points acknowledging the obstacles like so. But one overlooked and very powerful algorithm solving the same problem is goal-based vector pathfinding. Compared to A-star, the key difference with this algorithm is that it will process the best path to a goal point for any point of the grid in one and only calculation. And this drastically reduced processing time and power consumption. So now, let's dive into it. The problem will be set in a 2D plane, to which we will overlay a grid where each tile is a square of nth pixel. Now we can define our start point with a green tile, the end point with a red tile, and obstacles with grey tiles. The first step of this vector field pathfinding is to generate a heat map which attributes to each tile its distance from the goal point. The second step is to generate a vector field from the data given by the heat map. This part will give to each tile on the grid a vector that points to the right direction to end up as fast as possible to the end point. To generate our distance heat map, we will exploit a modified JXTRA algorithm. Here we will only use the method used in JXTRA algorithm to find the distance between two points. Before beginning, we must introduce a tool. We must at some point evaluate rough distance in order to give a values to work with. There are three types of distances used in pathfinding algorithms. The Manhattan distance, which states that the distance from one tile to another is 1 when going from right, left, up or down, or 2 when moving diagonally. Or the Chebyshev distance, which state that each neighbor of one tile, even though they're on the diagonals, all have a distance of one from the center tile. And the Euclidean distance, which is the only one to give floating values for their distance. Each one of them will behave differently based on what you're working on, and will give good or bad output depending on the context. So let's start by generating the heat map. We first create an empty list of tiles called the open list and to this open list we will append the end tile. This tile we picked, or node for now on, is called the current node, and all the nodes around it are the neighbor nodes. Now, for each neighbor node, we execute the next sequence. First, we'll look if the selected node is a wall or not. If not, we'll look if the node has been visited before. If it has, we follow the simple rule. If the selected node distance from the target plus A, A being the distance between two tiles depending on the type of distance you choose, is greater than the current node distance to the target, then we don't do anything. But if not, we set the current node distance to be equal to the selected node distance. Now, if the selected node has been visited before, we set its distance to be the current node distance plus A, and then we add the selected node to the open list. After doing this to each neighbor node, we remove the current node from the open list. And this whole process is repeated until the open list is empty. When done, each node of the plane will have been visited and attributed a distance from the target node. So you can see how heat map are important things to generate and how they are behaving depending on their surroundings. So now that all the tiles of our plane have distance from the target tile, this lets us with the generation of their vector field. We will use a process called kernel convolution. A great video exists on the subject by computer field, but I will give a short explanation of it. To simplify, a convolution kernel can be described as a discrete two-dimensional function that we will apply to each tile of the grid. Most of the time, a convolution kernel takes information about its neighbor to modify its own information. And that's exactly what we're doing here. In order to find the direction in which each tile needs to be pointing at, we're just looking at the gradient of each tile and thus its neighbors. Your convolution kernel can look on a one pixel radius or more, but a one pixel radius works perfectly fine and reduces processing time. So, how do we do that? 
The ID is to attribute to each neighbor node an arrow pointing from the center node to the corresponding node like so. Then we will set the arrow length to the distance value of the node it's linked to. The ID is to compute all of these arrows in some way that it will give us the final green arrow we're looking for. To simplify, we will give to each neighbor arrow a letter. What we are going to do to find the final arrow is to compute each neighbor arrow through a function, or more precisely the magnitude of this neighbor's arrow. Here we pick the function 1 over x for the example, but any decrease in function like minus x will work perfectly fine. Then sum those outputs, giving us at the end what we're looking for. And then we'll repeat this process of convolution kernel over each tile of the grid, giving us at the end each and every path to the endpoint. Now that the problem is solved, some tweaking can be done to optimize the algorithm. The first one is by the convolution kernel we choose. In some cases, taking as a convolution kernel the smallest length neighbor arrow can work perfectly fine. The only problem is that the result won't be as organic as using a function like 1 over x for the convolution kernel. However, both of these methods can be combined into one. Indeed, I experienced that pointing to the minimum arrow length when there's a wall among the neighbor nodes will create shorter path to the endpoint and thus a better algorithm. Another problem you might encounter is how the entity following the path will stick to the obstacles. This is due to the lack of angle clearance the algorithm offers. A way to counter this problem is to remove all the nodes next to an obstacle from the grid. By not computing them, you won't be able to walk on them and thus to be stuck on walls. So that is it for the video. I hope you liked it. Don't forget to like, subscribe and share the video if you feel like so.